<laughs> Thank you. She's loud. She is. What is the thing up there? Do you see a thing that says October 6, 20 songs? No. No. Okay. I don't. Oh, my. I'm not sure what that means. I'm sure it's nothing good. We'll see. What... <laughs> Good morning, Mitzi. Good morning, Joan Mellinger. Good morning, Jen. I had such a lovely time at your beautiful property. Hello, David. Hi, Don and Betty Ann. It was great to see you at lunch last week. Hello, Edmond. And the Gummy Bear King is with us. Let's see if Sk and Skittles is too. Hi. Good morning, August and Jack. Hi, Joyce Parrot. Hi, Ken Callie. Good morning, Joe and Gail. Wow. Don and Dick and Arthur and everyone who joined us by dialing in. Welcome. We see you. Brenda Hines. Robin. Robin. Rob, I hope you're having a great Father's Day, getting ready for your big birthday celebration tomorrow. Hope you have all kinds of fun things planned. Good morning, Mishi. And Bill and Mary Lou. Pizza, please. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today on this Father's Day. Hopefully you're doing something fun later on to celebrate the men in your life. Mm -hmm. Gary and I are driving down to DC where Katie has spent the last couple of days with her brothers and then we'll all have dinner together at a restaurant that the boys picked and then we'll bring Katie back home. But she's had a great couple of days uh, with her brothers. So that's been fun. They've sent us pictures of the things they've been doing. Morgan just wants a relaxing day at home. That's his Father's Day. That's an easy one to do. Yep. I can make that happen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Joan and Lil. Ken Callie. Good morning. What's your favorite gummy bear flavor? I want to know because the gummy bear king is is with us today. I do not like the consistency of gummy bears. <laughs> I realize I'm a realize I'm a minority. Of course you don't. Mine is pineapple, and then a close second is the green apple. Mm. I might, well, no, I really like green apple flavor. I love green apples. I don't know that I like them in gummies. So. Well, welcome to worship, everybody. We give thanks as we're winding down our Zoom worship here. We've got this Sunday and next Sunday. Um, the run is already back in person, and Unionville will be in person July 4th. So we give thanks for those of you that have come to join us. We have a beautiful prelude this morning, Faith of Our Fathers, offered by Chris McGuckin. I invite you to be still and know that God is God as we listen to the prelude. And let me know if you can't hear it. It's very quiet. Very, very quiet. It's as loud as I can get it.
Thank you, Chris. Please join me in our call to worship. We come to worship you, God, and we long for comfort. In your arms this morning can our, dress, our distress subside. In the name of Jesus, you hold us as your children, and you promise us life, life eternal, life with you. May these promises guide our thoughts, our prayers, and our worship this morning. This is a sing-along hymn. I wonder if everyone can hear it okay, because it might have been just me that the music was soft. Can you hear this? Can you hear that? Did you hear that? It's really soft. I don't know about anybody else, so. Okay, because it's as loud as I can make it. Let me try. All right, so I'm gonna try it and somebody text me if you all, if it's too soft and you guys can't hear it. Okay, so there, uh... Joan says it's it's soft and Lil says it's soft. Okay. I wonder if it's because it's going through your headset. I wonder, what did you say? I wonder if it's because you're plugged into the headset. I don't know. That's what I'm wondering. Me. All the technology. <laughs> okay, let's try this. Is that better? Is that better? I can't hear anything now. Okay. A year and a half in and technology still fails us. <laughs> I've got it as loud as it'll go. Sure. And I don't know what other buttons to push. So we're just going to have to. Could people hear that and it was just soft was or soft. people couldn't hear at all? Yeah, clearly my microphone is sensitive. I, I, just, I don't know what other buttons to push. So, young me, entertain the folks with some <laughs> lively right. vignettes. <laughs> lively vignettes. Well, um, goodness gracious. 
You put me on the spot. I have no story. To I know. <laughs> Random stories. Um, what did you have for dinner last night? Well, Start there. We, you know, so here, here's the thing. My, my beautiful, wonderful, smart, intelligent husband, funny husband, he, um, he is on a, a he, he's in, on this ambitious um, goal to, to lose some weight before our older daughter's wedding in August, um, August 14th. And, um, and so Saturday is designated cheat day. I think anyone who is trying to lose weight and working really hard during the week needs to reward themselves somehow. And whereas maybe I don't recommend an entire day of cheat eating, I do recommend, you know, a cheat meal. And so Saturday was our Father's Day cheat meal and we had wasabi. Japanese. Are you familiar with wasabi? Mm -hmm. And um, it was just, it, it was just perfect. And of course, because it's our cheat day, I ordered way too much and I was determined not to waste it. So I just stuffed myself like a turkey and I'm paying for it today. <laughs> that is... <laughs> Gluttony. Didn't you preach on gluttony? I did a couple weeks ago as I was eating Twinkies. <laughs> and I acknowledge that. I told folks. All right. Well, I, some of you can hear it. Some of you can't. I fiddled with enough buttons that I'm afraid I'm just going to, sure. the whole thing's going to fall apart. So I apologize. Um, thank you, Bill and Mary Lou. That was a great, fun song. And we're just going to have to, just going to have to go back. Yeah. Let's, yeah. We're here and we're going to power through it. And we're going to power through it. Hmm? That's right. Please join me in the call to confession. God is gracious and merciful and knows our needs even before they reach our lips. Still, we engage in confession, admitting to God all that rests uneasily in our hearts. Confident of God's love, let us make our confession first in silent prayer. Sometimes, oh God, we forget people. Or we toss them aside, the difficult ones, the needy ones, the ones that are hard to spend time with, the ones who confront us. And sometimes when we do things like that, it's not really about the other people, but about us. We are uncomfortable, or we feel guilty, or we follow brighter, shinier people, or we worry about what will make us look good. We are in such desperate need of your forgiveness. We need to be forgiven for our sins, for our mistakes, for mistaking what the world values with what you value. Help us to be better and to see more clearly and to care more thoroughly. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven and thus free to love and serve. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Apparently the sound was okay for Fred. Yeah, and I got some text that it was okay for some folks and okay. not others. We are not in control. This. Can you hear this? very faint.
I've made an executive decision <clears throat> that I think we're just going to skip the rest. There's enough people that are texting that can't hear it at all that are sitting in silence. So I was going to suggest the very same thing. Yeah, we're just going to. So Bill, Mary Lou, Chris, um, I apologize. Your music is lovely and I'm not sure what's happening. Well, and in the meantime, there God is still going to be worshipped. So friends, let's. Let's gather ourselves for the prayer for illumination. Living God, help us to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do through Christ our Lord, amen. Our first scripture lesson comes to us from Paul's first letter to Timothy. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Our second scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Got to show you my little people. Mm -hmm. I know how much you enjoy the little people, so let's get back to that. <laughs> people of the Middle Ages. Yep. Okay. Yep. And again, all the virtues are ladies, all the vices are men. Oh my. I, I didn't do it. I didn't paint it. Today we're talking about generosity. The Greek text from the passage of 1 Timothy suggests that greed is a kind of craving, a clutching or a snatching associated with extending the arm or the hand to grasp or take something. It's a desire deformed into an inquisitive and, possess acquisitive and possessive power. Think of the commandment in Exodus against coveting or the prophet Isaiah denouncing persons who reach out to join house to house and add field to field. It's a craving to acquire and possess. One figure or image of greed that comes to mind is the hoarder or the miser who relentlessly acquires and then jealously guards their possessions. This is the image of the greedy that comes through in several of Jesus's parables. Consider the parable of the rich man whose land produced abundantly. In response, he decided to tear down his barns and build bigger ones in which to store his grain and goods only to discover that that very night he would die. Recall the parable of the talents in which a servant faces the harshest, harshest judgment from his master after hiding his wealth by burying it in the ground. Try as we might, greed is not so easily tamed. Greed is more than a craving for material goods and more than a matter of possession and accumulation. In its narrowest sense, greed is associated with a craving for monetary wealth and material possessions. It is about a desire to accumulate and possess. However, alongside the narrower and more popular sense, the church has also recognized a broader sense of greed. In its broader sense, greed is more than a materialistic vice, encompassing not just material possessions, but also intangible things associated with the human spirit, like honor, knowledge, authority, or power. Thus, those who are greedy might not be at all materialistic in the popular sense of the term. 
Yet by craving honor or prominence, for instance, they are just as greedy as those who strive to acquire and lay aside great stores of material wealth. Over against the vice of greed, the moral tradition of the church sets the virtue that is called almsgiving, beneficence, or liberality. For clarity, let's call it generosity. If greed is synonymous with the clutching hand, generosity's likeness is the open hand, as when the Lord instructs Israel not to be tight-fisted towards its neighbors, particularly the poor and needy, or when Jesus, in Luke and in Matthew, instructs disciples to give without thought of return. When Paul lifts up before the church the paradigmatic instance of generosity, Christ himself, though in the form of God did not clutch or cling to did not clutch or cling to that, but instead gave himself to us for our redemption. When we consider images or figures of generosity, we must not begin with the sharer, but with the beggar. The generosity of the Christian is the generosity of a beggar. After all, as scripture and the offertory of many churches make clear, we have nothing to give apart from what we have first been given. This is throughout the Old and the New Testaments. Thus, as we pray, we beg, give us this day our daily bread. Beginning with the image of the beggar is significant for the way it fundamentally alters how Christians understand themselves to be sharers. The open hand of generosity is first a hand that is open to receive from the Lord. The Christian practice of generosity is rooted in God's gracious providence. We open our hands. We give to all who ask with no thought of return. We give everything because in Christ we have been given everything. As the great reformer Martin Luther wrote, we have been given such great abundance in Christ that all our labors and indeed our whole life become a surplus, surplus with which to serve and do good to our neighbors. All that we have and all that we are is given by the Lord. And so we give all that we have and all that we are in love to our neighbors out of gratitude for God's good gifts. In the end, greed is an expression of a lack of trust in God. The greedy are locked in a world of scarcity because they do not trust in God's providence. They do not trust that God will provide what they really need. They are not content with God's provision. They don't believe that being rich in good works, generous and ready to share is a path to life that is really life. Instead, notwithstanding the ways they attempt to conceal it, including invoking God's name to sanctify their accumulation and consumption, the greedy trust in the strength and cunning of their arms to secure their lives. The virtue of generosity, in contrast, is anchored not in the strength of our arms, as though we can be generous only after we have successfully grasped and attained. Generosity is rather an expression of trust in God's fidelity to the promises of Scripture. Because the Lord is our shepherd, we cannot lack. Though we give away our very lives, they finally cannot be lost, because in giving even our lives, we shall find them. Though we heed Paul's exhortation and give after the example of Christ, even to the point of death on the cross, God provides in the form of resurrection. Simply put, we are generous because God is generous. We are generous without end because we cannot reach the end of or exhaust God's gracious abundance. We simply cannot outgive God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Annalie. I have that sensation in me, like that is a word that I needed to hear today. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Friends. Join me now in the affirmation of faith. We believe and know that Jesus is the Holy One of God. We believe that he is the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. We believe that he is in the Father and the Father is in him. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, we have life in his name. Amen. Amen. So this song that we're not going to be able to hear is wonderful. Bill wrote it based on the first Timothy text about the widow's might. I've heard it before. It is lovely. I will send it out when I send out um, the weekly email with my sermon script in it. I'll include the music because it is beautiful. 
thanks to all of you for your continued generosity to the churches that we are able to continue to do many things um, in God's name in our communities. Pray with me, please, the prayer of dedication. Mighty God, you overwhelm us with your great mercy. You surprise us with your wondrous love. As you draw us into this renewing relationship of love, may we respond with gratitude as we offer the substance of our souls to continue the ministry of Jesus. In his name, we present our gifts. Amen. Amen. Oh, please use your chat feature um, like you've been doing all day today, um, telling us about the sound um, to share with us your joys and concerns with the community. What's going on with you? Skittles got his cast off. So that's good news. Very good news. I'm glad that you didn't have to keep it on for most of the summer, August. That's great. We've been asked to pray. We were praying for Fred Graham, a friend of uh, Marion Gorkos. He and his wife were both on hospice. He did pass away. So prayers for the Graham family as they mourn the passing of Fred and anticipate the um, loss of his wife, their mother. And Marianne is going to East Lansing, Michigan for the funeral. So she's not at church today, but she wanted us to say prayers. So, Lord, hear our prayers. I'd wanted to play the tingling song. I know we've got a lot of June birthdays. Rob McPherson's birthday is uh, tomorrow. June 21st. So I was going to play the song for him, but that won't happen. So we'll just, I'll have to show up outside of his house and have a flash mob and sing him the birthday song. I think he would really, <laughs> he seems like the kind of guy that would really enjoy a bunch of people showing up at his house early in the morning to sing. At the crack of dawn. At the crack of dawn. <laughs> Prayers for Amanda. Oh, Mary Ann says, thanks, Annalie. I'm listening in my car. Oh, fantastic. So Amanda is driving to Joan's daughter's driving to Vermont tomorrow for a two week residency in graduate school. So prayers for Amanda. Traveling mercies. Lord, hear our prayers. Oh boy. Um, prayers of gratitude for all the dads out there. Um, the loving dads who have, um, you know, sacrificed and loved and um, done their best, their very best. And when they knew better, they did better. Gratitude for all of them. And, for, and prayers for those who don't have great experiences with their dads or who don't have dads or who don't know their dads. Prayers of comfort and healing for them. Prayers ascending for Gary Custis, Patty Tools, niece's husband. He's going through a test for a tumor near his liver. So mm. prayers for him that he finds comfort and healing. Lord, hear our prayers. Well, friends, I'm sure there are many, many things on our hearts that, that we treasure and aren't willing to share at this moment. And that's okay, because God hears them all. So let's take what we have been given and those we have not shared all to God in prayer with the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples nearly 2000 years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, friends. 
It is a good reminder. It is a good reminder because the scriptures tells, tell us that the wounds of a friend are faithful. And our friend, Annalie, has reminded us through proclaiming the good word that we are all beggars. We are all beggars. And we have, some of us have received abundantly from God in Christ. And it is, it is the extension of grace that we give freely out of the abundance given to us. So go forth this week, giving abundantly out of the fountain of wealth that has been poured into you. Do it generously, lovingly, joyfully. Amen. Remember that there is nothing that we can do to outgive God. So go into a world coming from a place of abundance and not scarcity, a place of generosity and not greed, sharing your blessings and being a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. Young me, thank you for all your help. These past 17 months on Zoom, I could not have done it without you from doing slides, writing liturgy, just being here every week. Thank you. That was, it's not a job for one person. So thank you very much. It really isn't. It really isn't. And thank you for letting me be here with you and for, for, you know, coming up with the idea of the collaboration in the first place and being bold enough to just jump in and say, let's do this together because this is crazy and we don't know how long it's going to last. And it's only going to last two weeks. <laughs> I still remember how sad I was putting the sign up on the church door saying that we were closed for two weeks and we would reopen on March 29th, 2020. And I was so sad. And here we are. But we're looking forward to July 4th. We've had some amazing in-person outdoor worshiping. It's just such a beautiful space. So we're excited. Next week, we'll have 9 o'clock outdoors, 10 o'clock on Zoom. And then starting July 4th, it'll just be one service. It'll be uh, in-person um, with some kind of live streaming capability. Got to figure that out. Yeah. That's, that's not my Bailey week. Bailey week, I have, we have some very... Um, much smarter people than me doing that. So you, you know, two have a good day, Lil. Congratulations to both congregations. You survived. We survived together and that's how it's done. And now we get to go back into the sanctuaries, albeit carefully, cautiously, um, and, and, and definitely being careful not to go where angels fear to tread. <laughs> um, but congratulations, well done, well done. It was a lot, <laughs> but these congregations rose up and. Yes, it was a lot, yes. And hopefully you guys can breathe a little easier, but don't cough on each other, not just yet. <laughs> we should never cough on each other you know <laughs> turn away or do the do the dracula when you sneeze that's right all right well thank you everybody all you fathers out there enjoy your day yes. young me tell morgan to enjoy his day and i guess oh, i will yeah. see you later okay have a have a great safe trip to dc thank you bye everybody love you all